Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzz Weaver channel, current events, headlines that are in the news, technology, social media, and items of interest that come up during the week that I just kind of want to share with you guys. It is a bit of a departure from what is the standard coverage here on the channel. But nonetheless, guys, I want to welcome all of you here. And if this is your first time, I'd like to suggest to you guys to consider clicking on uh, the watermark down there in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe and then click that notification bell so you guys will know when the next Friday Vlog is available along with the additional content that's here on the channel. In gaming news, Tuesday, January the 15th, we had the update and patch for Battlefield 5. This is now officially the first major update for the game, and I've had a few hours to play it, and I have to say that it does seem to feel a lot better. I've not had a lot of time to play my medic to really know how the changes to SMGs are affecting the game, but I am very encouraged by what I was able to experience so far. I am considering making a dedicated video for the newest update and patch, so be on the lookout for that should I uh, pursue that. And in Civilization VI, we are continuing to see the development team tease out new sibs for the game. And of course, I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, this week, we saw the release of Sweden, so I'm looking forward to seeing what all the particular attributes are for them. But nonetheless, gaming news has been pretty nice. I'm looking forward to uh, all the newest changes that are gonna be coming also to Battlefield V uh, in later this month, as we can anticipate another patch. And then of course, the release of Lightning Strikes. A Nobel Prize winning American scientist James Watson has been stripped of his honorary titles due to a racist statement he made during a documentary. Now if you're not familiar with James Watson, he and Francis Crick were the discoverers of DNA in the 1950s. Now. Uh, Watson was able to uh, base his discovery of the double helix on Rosalind Franklin's work, a British scientist there in the UK. But nonetheless, uh, this particular topic isn't about their amazing and incredible iconic scientific work, but a statement that was made by Watson in a documentary. Now, I'm not really going to be able to go into his actual statement or even uh, quote it because uh, YouTube, uh, as of last week, have made changes to their filtering system that could potentially strike this video uh, for not being advertiser friendly. But nonetheless, I would encourage you guys to click on the link in the public section, which I will leave. Now, uh, these types of controversies are not unique or unusual for science. For example, as you know, in Christian apologetics, we have a uh, leading professor of mathematics uh, at Cambridge University, John Lennox, who is often criticized for him being a Christian. And then ironically enough, speaking of DNA, Francis Collins was the head of the Human Genome Project for many years there, uh, working with DNA. He was a geneticist, of course, and he also was a Christian. And uh, you may have seen him in an interview uh, during Bill Maher's mockumentary, or documentary, of course, uh, concerning religion. But nonetheless, uh, these levels of controversy are not unique to science. But here's the thing that uh, always irritates me when it comes to um, these types of discussion, and that is, you know, we have certain groups of people who always want to base things on um, intelligence, right? Um, well, if people were intelligent enough, they would have voted this way. Or if people were intelligent enough, they would understand this. Or if people were intelligent enough, they would uh, realize this or the other. And we can't base everything based on intellect, right? Intelligence is only as good as what it produces. And it's just like logic, right? Logic isn't the ultimate absolute in the universe. And we don't base everything that we do in our everyday life on logic. So everything has certain limitations and human beings are far more complex than just simply taking an IQ test, which an IQ test is only going to measure a portion of someone's capabilities. It's not going to determine their capabilities to be um, intuitive, competent, capable, active, engaged in all the things that you need to be a complete human being. So nonetheless, um, I did find this very interesting that um, because of our hyperbolic uh, cultural nature and identity politics and things that are going on, I found this very curious that they would bring this up because uh, the scientific community is one of those communities like the medical community or even, you know, well, or even in, in greater sciences like uh, in NASA or others where these individuals speak with authority. But it's important to remember here that all statements made by scientists are not statements of science. So even within the scientific community and the perception of the scientific community, there's always other factors that are involved. So it's hard to say how big of a deal this is, but the scientific community 
like the medical community or even government and political committees, um, they all have a very closed network of individuals where they kind of have checks and balances of what one says or one doesn't say to uh, maintain the continuity, of course, and integrity of the institution. Because, of course, uh, this is how they, uh, I don't want to say how they control the masses, but of course, um, these are figures of authority speaking with authority because, of course, they are in very uh, professional and very uh, vital roles in society. But nonetheless, guys, I would encourage you guys to check out that video down in the published section below. Also on Tuesday, January 15th, Prime Minister Theresa May faced her largest parliamentary defeat, as they say, in the democratic era, according to the article. Now, the thing here is, in my opinion as an American, it is only my opinion. Now, I leave that up to my British friends to determine uh, what her particular strategies and plans and or what your government's strategies and plans are. But nonetheless, I think just from my own opinion, based upon what I have read and what I have learned is that she wasn't really offering much of an actual exit deal. But I also understand the integral nature of how this works because the European Union is a body of authority there in Europe that essentially wants to maintain that control and maintain their power in Europe. And they don't want to lose any of their golden goose money ticket tax faring individuals. So the thing here is, in my opinion, what I believe is going to happen is we're going to go to a no confidence vote with Theresa May and then perhaps a referendum for another vote on Brexit. And the thing that really bothers me here, well, there's a lot of things that bother me, but this is, in my opinion, really kind of the cultural difference. Uh, even though uh, we in America share a lot of the same uh, ideologies and philosophies and worldviews as our British uh, partners over there in the UK, but at the same time, there is a cultural difference. They're, they, they, you know, they're raised differently than we are here in the States. We, we think differently from one another here in the States and, and over there. But nonetheless, um, the thing here, I guess, that I want to point out is, um, Oftentimes, but even the Canadians will often ask me these types of things about Americans and just, and again, I can't speak for every American. And that is for me, individuality in, a, in the United States and America is such a huge thing about our cultures. Individualism, the individual empowerment and the ability for an individual to succeed and achieve and so forth and so on. Of course, we've always heard it takes a village, this, that, and the other and whatnot and whatnot, or it, you know, you didn't do that by yourself says Obama. But nonetheless, the thing here is that I think that what's happening is that the British people, the British government are trying to move into that direction of getting another vote on Brexit. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I understand that there's a lot of complexity to it. I mean, to me, this Brexit thing is like a divorce. It's very nasty. It's very ingrained. There's a lot of things that are joined together and there's so many moving pieces that can be affected by something like say like a complete exit you know complete brexit entirely uh and it's really going to be kind of a curious thing to see how they're going to work that out because i know Theresa may was a remainer and so i mean i don't know how much that plays into it either but i mean it seems to me now understand i'm coming from an american perspective here you know democracy works when the individual people are allowed to to place their votes, right? And the people voted. There wasn't anything ambiguous. There wasn't anything underhanded. There wasn't any kind of flowery language. It was very simple. Do we remove ourselves from Brexit? Do we leave the EU? Do we leave Brexit altogether? I mean, do we leave um, the EU altogether or do we stay in the EU? I mean, to me, that seems a uh, pretty clear cut. And I'm pretty sure that people were aware of how to vote or what they wanted to vote because even here in the States, we heard about this for quite some time and even the weeks leading up to the actual vote. So there was no mystery here as to what people were voting on. Unfortunately, uh, the vote turned out to be in favor of leaving, which a lot of people did not want to do. And you could kind of liken it to here in the United States where the youth weren't uh, particularly enthusiastic, not all youth, but you know what I mean by certain uh, groups of political groups who weren't in particularly uh, enthusiastic about President Trump winning. And you could say kind of the same thing or the same groups of mindsets there in, uh, in, in uh, the UK that uh, weren't too hip to uh, the Brexit deal. So nonetheless, we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. But I really hope that the British people can come together and come up with some kind of plan. I know 
Leaving the EU is going to be very messy and it could be very tricky to get it done. But nonetheless, I think even maybe even if you do a revote, it could end up even being another uh, vote to leave the EU. I'm not entirely sure. But nonetheless, if you are from the UK, I do welcome your comments and thoughts down there in the published section. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for the Friday vlog, our second one in the new year. And as you can see, I'm sporting the new lab mic. I'm not doing anything fancy or tricky by running up my shirt or trying to keep it uh, hidden or anything like that. But nonetheless, I do like it. So far, we'll see how uh, it works in post-production as I'll be taking the video down and doing some editing work. And hopefully, it'll be a lot clearer. And it was kind of a noisy day here in, in the house as I was <laughs> doing this recording. So we'll kind of see how well that's going to work. Nonetheless, guys, I want to thank all of you for your continued support, your likes, shares, and comments. And if you haven't already, be sure you click on that uh, channel icon appearing right there on the screen to subscribe and that notification bell so you guys will know when the next Friday vlog and or additional content is here and available on the channel.